Hi guys, this is Phil from Teach Blend, and today we're going to look at Microsoft Teams' new Insight tab and also the Analytics option in Teams. So we're going to use these to look at how we can track attendance, track engagement, and how we can actually look at how well our students are engaging with remote learning and remote teaching. I hope you find this video useful. So the first thing we need to do is enable the Insight tab. So to do this, you need to click the plus button within your classroom team and then choose Insights. If you don't see it straight away, you can also search for this as well. Once you've clicked it, you'll need to add this to your team. You'll also want to uncheck the post what says post this to the channel. The reason you'll do this is because the students will not actually see this anyway. So you're just going to untick that and click save. This will then pull in the insights. Now, as you can see on this example, nothing and digital activity hasn't taken place as it's just a test class, but you will see the students that have been added to this class. First thing you'll see is digital activity, average grade, on time assignments, the average time for feedback and the communication activity. And you can also choose date ranges. So for example, a specific day, the actual day, a seven day rolling average, a 30 day rolling average and all time. And this will give the feedback and digital activity for each one of those time zones. You can also see each individual student in this example, we've got two students in this class. And you can also filter by certain activity such as communication files and assignments. You can also filter by particular students, which is really useful if you need to have a report on a particular student. It's worth noticing as well the red exclamation mark. And what this does is it alerts you that there may be an issue with that particular student not engaging in online materials or discussion. Now, what we're going to do now is have a look at some sample data in a team so that we can have a look at what this actually looks like in practice. The first one is digital activity and in here it tells you an average of how much your students have engaged and then for individual students if they have posted reactions to messages, viewed or edited files and also turned in assignments. Next one is average grade and this presents a calculated average grade from all the assignments that you have given either for a particular student or for your class. If you hover over the dots you'll see grade data for that particular assignment. The next one is on time assignments and this gives you a percentage of the assignments that were turned in on time for your class and you can also see the total percentage of assignments that were late and missing as well as submission status such as on time or missing for each specific assignment so this is really useful. The next one is average time for feedback. Now average time for feedback shows you the average length of time it takes in days between a student submitting an assignment and when it's returned back to them with marking. The number on the tile is the average time for feedback across all the students and all the assignments. On the line graph each dot on the line represents an assignment and if you hover over the dot you can see data for an individual assignment that has been given. The next one is perhaps the most useful as it gives you a breakdown of individual students and your class to see how well they are engaging in remote lessons and remote teaching. So the communication activity presents data on posts, replies and reactions to in-channel conversation. And the number on the tile is the total number of all student posts, replies and reactions. And in the graph, you can also use a drop down menu and select options to see activity across all channels, multiple channels or a single channel. And the graph ref reflects data from students you've selected. You can, for example, select an individual student, multiple students or more. And you can also use filters. On the column list, in this section, you can see student names and the total number which co calculates posts, replies and likes that the student has made. You can also select one of the bars on the graph that corresponds to a specific date and the column will change to only show activity from that date. We're just going to go back now into my class team and I'm going to select all students and you'll see that you can also export this information to Excel. So this is useful if, for example, you want to give this information to someone else such as a head of department. You can also use this data to put into your teaching file and you'll see that the tabs at the bottom break down the data into summary, assignment data 
and communication data to keep it nice and simple to view. You can also view analytics from a team. So if you click the free ellipses on a team, you can also then go into analytics. Now this is great to have a breakdown of just how well the class is doing in general. And you can select averages from seven days, 30 days and 90 days. And in here you'll see such things as how many users have been active, when they've been active, what roles and activities they've taken place in, but not individual students. So this is a great way to get a general feel of how well that class has participated in lessons. The next thing to look at is remote lessons. So for example, if you're a part of a remote lesson, what you can do is show the participant list in that lesson. So this is useful to see which students have attended your online and remote lessons. And soon the features will be able to allow you to export this list as an Excel document in the future. I hope you found this video useful. Please remember to like and subscribe to TeachBlend. Thank you.